you're not bad at coding. Let me start there. You're not bad at coding. You're bad at the way you're trying to learn coding. And that difference is the whole game. Most beginners think coding is hard because they're sitting there, memorizing syntax, watching tutorials, copying along, hoping one day the universe opens up and blesses them with full stack clarity. That's not learning. That's fantasy role play. That's like trying to build a skyscraper on wet sand and then wondering why it keeps falling over. In this video, I'm going to do three things for you. I'm going to show you the actual reason coding still feels impossible for you. I'm going to show you why that system keeps you broke, overwhelmed, and basically unemployable in 2025, even with AI everywhere. And I'm going to give you the shift, the one approach that turns you from tutorial consumer into builder people want to work with. By the end of this video, you're going to understand why just watching more content is the same trap as selling to the wrong client and why most people never escape it. Here's the uncomfortable truth. If you're struggling with code right now, it's probably because you are serving the wrong customer. And that customer is your ego. Your ego wants comfort. Your ego wants to feel smart. So you binge YouTube, you binge Instagram reels about use the stack and you binge AI prompts. You consume so much content that you feel productive without shipping even one real thing. That's fake progress. Then you make it worse. You try to learn JavaScript and Python and Rust and React and you maybe you saw someone on Twitter talk about Elixir. So now that's on your list too. You're on day nine of your coding journey and your plan is six stacks deep. That's the equivalent of a brand new agency saying, yeah, we do TikTok ads and Facebook ads and email marketing and funnels and sales coaching and web design for anyone who will give us $500. On paper, it looks like hustle. In reality, it's chaos. You build nothing solid. You're optimizing for knowing stuff instead of solving something. Tech does not reward knowers. Tech rewards solvers. Nobody's paying you for, I understand what a for loop is. They're paying you for, hey, this is broken. Can you make it work by Friday? If you're not aiming at a real problem for a real person, you are literally building on sand. That is why you never feel stable. And then AI shows up and makes the trap look attractive. You open ChatGPT or cursor and you're like, build me a dashboard with user auth and comments and a leaderboard. And it spits out code and you're like, yo, I'm unstoppable. No, you're not unstoppable. You're temporarily babysitting a code base you don't understand. That's the same as handing $1,500 of ad spend to a business that can't close a single lead and then being surprised when they cancel and blame you. If AI writes code you don't understand, you don't own anything. You cannot maintain it, you cannot fix it, you cannot extend it, you cannot sell it. You can't even answer basic questions about how it works without running back to AI. That's not leverage, that's dependency with lipstick. Here's another way you sabotage yourself. You're chasing job ready without ever becoming project ready. You're trying to skip from zero to senior developer salary without actually finishing a single working app front to back. That's like saying I want $3 million agency and someone asks, cool, what have you sold? And you go, uh, two logos for $500 each. But I watched like 40 hours of sales training. Come on, you copy CS degree curriculum because it feels official. Data structures, algorithms, you're 25 minutes into binary search trees and you haven't even built a login form yet. You're studying to pass a class you're not in. School is built for grades. Industry is built for shipping. Those are different games. You also let fear pick your stack. Instead of saying, I'm going to build with React and Node and Postgres and I'll get deadly with that, you just say, I'll just watch beginner-friendly tutorials and never commit to anything real. That is you underpricing yourself on day one. You're saying, I'm generic, I'm available, I will do anything. Translation, nobody needs you. Then you hit me with, I don't know where to start. Let me just tell you what I don't know usually means in plain English, I don't want to pick something because then I might suck at it in public. So you keep planning and organizing and researching best roadmap 2025 for six months. Last piece of the puzzle. You're doing this alone. Zero accountability. Zero code reviews. Nobody expecting you to ship anything. 
Nobody asking, hey, is it live? You think you're protecting yourself from judgment. What you're actually doing is guaranteeing you will quietly quit before you ever get good. In business, that's called structural churn. Customers leave for reasons you can't control. In coding, you are the customer. You're leaving yourself because the system you built gives you no reason to stay. All this adds up to one sentence. Coding feels hard because you're trying to scale on top of a broken base. Not because you're dumb, because the foundation sucks. Why does this matter? Because this isn't just about learning to code. This is about what your life looks like 12 months from now. Let me walk you through this using business. In business, we talk about LTV, lifetime value. As a developer, your LTV is your ability to earn, to build products, to launch startups, to spin up tools on demand. If you never learn to actually ship something end to end, your lifetime value stays near zero. You're just permanently interested in tech. Then we've got CAC, cost to acquire. In business, CAC is how much does it cost to get a customer? For you, CAC is how much time, frustration, and mental stress you are spending to make progress. When you're learning the wrong way, jumping stacks, binging tutorials, outsourcing to AI, you don't understand, your cost explodes and your results don't move. High CAC, low LTV. You are the worst business model I've ever seen. Then we've got payback period. That's how long until this skill pays you back. When your whole strategy is consume more, consume more, consume more, your payback period basically becomes infinity. You never collect. That's where burnout shows up. This is why people quit in month three and go, yeah, coding just wasn't for me. No, coding was fine. Your model was trash. And here's the part nobody tells you. You destroy your relationship with yourself. Every time you tell yourself, this week I'm going to learn React. And then you don't build a single React component that actually does anything. You're teaching your own brain that you don't keep promises. That identity damage compounds. Six months in, you're not just behind technically. You don't trust you anymore. Next, you become fully replaceable. If the only thing you bring to the table is, I know how to ask AI to generate code, Congratulations. So does literally every other person on earth with a keyboard. But if you can diagnose a bug, fix it, push a new build, collect feedback, pivot, now you're rare. Companies do not fire rare. Another cost, you never get proof. Proof is not, I watched a playlist. Proof is a repo link, a working demo. Someone DMing you, hey, can I try this? Someone emailing you, when does this launch? Without that, you can't get hired. You can't attract a co-founder. You can't get beta testers. You can't pitch investors. You're invisible. You don't exist. Also, your day-to-day -day becomes firefighting code you don't understand. Because AI spit out something complex and now you're duct taping bugs with more AI prompts. And the whole thing feels like holding a collapsing tent in a hurricane. That constant panic, that's why you start telling yourself, this industry is toxic. It's not toxic. You just built a Franken app you can't support. And here's the big one. You will miss waves. When lockdown hit, I helped ship an AI assisted mental health journaling app under a startup called GitHub. People were isolated, anxious, disconnected. Timing was everything. We moved fast, we shipped fast. We supported users in real time. We iterated features. We kept it alive. That app worked not because we had the idea. Everybody had the idea. It worked because we could build it and evolve it on demand. If you can't move on a niche nowadays, someone else will. That's how people watch entire opportunities pass and then say, man, I had that idea first. Yeah, but somebody else shipped it first. Last point here. This problem compounds in the wrong direction. The longer you sit in, I kind of know how to code, but I don't really build. The harder it gets to break out. You're basically running a business with 30% monthly churn. Except the thing that's churning isn't customers. It's your own belief that you can actually pull this off. And when belief leaves, skills stop growing. Okay, so how do we flip it? Same way you fix a broken business. You fire the wrong customers and move up market. In code, that means you stop being a passive learner and you become a builder with one focus. There are four steps to doing that. Step one, 
pick your customer. And no, your customer is not the whole world. Your customer is one person with one painful problem. Watch how this works. There is Shay. Kids in Korea need to learn English in a way that's actually fun. So he started building an English learning game for kids. Real problem, real user. Gina, my church has members who don't speak the same language. We need instant translation for sermons. So she built the church community app focused on translation and accessibility. Real pain, real urgency. Me, developers need a place to ask questions, help each other and actually get rewarded instead of ignored or roasted. So I started building Let's Social, a gamified Q&A community, kind of Stack Overflow meets XP system. That's our user. When you define that level of who, suddenly you know what to build first. For this person, for this pain. Step two, pick one stack. This is you raising your price. When I say pick a stack, I mean front end, back end, database, lock it in, marry it. I'm using React, Node, Mongo. Or I'm using Next.js, Superbase, or I'm using Python, FastAPI, and Postgres. What you are not allowed to do is keep shopping because generalists with no reps are invisible. Specialists with reps are valuable. This is my stack is you saying this is where I win. Step three, build MVP for that one customer, not 10 features, not my dream startup with AI agents and 3D AR and crypto wallets and dark mode and the marketplace. Core loop only. For Let Social, the core loop is ask, get help, earn credibility. That's it. Can a dev ask a question? Can somebody answer? Can we track that you helped? That's the heartbeat. If that doesn't work, nothing else matters. When we shipped the mental health journaling app during lockdown, same thing. Core loop was log mood, reflect, get guided support. No social graph, no badges, no premium tier. We built the thing people actually needed right then. Step four, build in public, fast, show ugly screenshots, record a 30 second screen capture saying, login is finally working. I want to cry, here's what I fixed today. We're not guessing demand. Demand is literally walking in the door because we built in public. This is why learning to code is non-negotiable. If you can't code, you can't even get to step three. You're stuck in idea land trying to convince some random dev to partner with you and build your dream for sweat equity. Spoiler, they won't care like you care. Now, a warning. To do this, you're going to have to fire features. Most beginners drown because they try to ship every cool idea at once. You need to be able to say, that's not shipping right now. That discipline is the coding version of saying no to bad clients. You're also going to have to walk backwards. Sometimes you spend two weeks building something the wrong way, then learn the right way. And you have to delete those two weeks and rebuild. That is going to feel like ripping money out of your own hand and lighting it on fire. Good. That's exactly what growth feels like identity wise. This is where a lot of you are going to get punched. You're going to go from I know all the buzzwords to why does my auth token keep expiring when I refresh the page? That feels like losing status. It's not. That is the moment you stop being a spectator and you start being a builder. And once you do this for one app, once you ship one real thing, end to end, everything changes. Debugging gets easier. Reading other people's code gets easier. Talking to engineers gets easier. Using AI gets 10 times easier because now AI is your assistant, not your boss. You stop saying, can AI build this for me? And you start saying, write me a helper that does X so I can plug it in here. That's a completely different level of power. At that point, you're no longer begging to be hired. You're walking in like, here's what I built. Here's who's using it. Here's what they asked for next. That's upmarket talent. Now I'll give you the tactical version. This is how you fix it right now. Step one, audit yourself. Ask this out loud. What problem am I actually solving with my code right now? If your answer is I'm learning to code, that's not a problem. Nobody wakes up at 6 a.m. crying because you personally haven't learned to code. My sister keeps forgetting her medication schedule and we need reminders that adapt to her work shifts. That's a problem. That's where you start. Step two, define your ideal user. Who is the person you're helping? 
What are they going to do to solve the problem without you? What are they duct taping with Google Sheets or Notes app right now? If someone is hacking their own solution already, that is gold. That means urgency exists. Step three, pick your stack. You get one front end, one back end, one database. Example, React, Node, MongoDB. Vue, Firebase. Next.js, Superbase. Lock it in for 60 to 90 days, no wandering. No, but I heard Russ is faster, marry it. Step four, the rule of 100. This is where the compounding happens. 100 minutes a day coding your actual app. 100 lines of code a day. 100 outreach messages across a month to real people in that niche. Would you use this? What's missing? What's annoying right now? You don't need perfection. You need volume of reps. Step five, build the core loop first. Your V1 is just login action result. Login, do the thing, see the value, that's it. No leaderboards, no analytics dashboard, no dark mode, no notifications. That's dessert. You haven't eaten protein yet. Step six, post it publicly. You don't have to launch. You're just saying, here's today's progress. Screenshot, short clip, whatever. This by itself attracts testers, co-founders, people who give feedback, people who cheer for you, and sometimes money. Step eight, put yourself in a builder environment. Mentorship, group calls, community, code review. Peers who ask, is it live yet? I don't care how smart you are. You're not going to win this game alone long term. People don't lose because they're stupid. People lose because they stop. Step nine, kill your ego. You're going to trash code. You're going to waste days. You're going to feel like you went backwards. That's normal. That's you transitioning from fake progress. I watched four hours of tutorials. I feel good. To real progress. Login works. User data persists. Step 10. Repeat until someone says this sentence. Hey, can I use that? That sentence is your first win. That sentence means you're now in a different league. That one line is worth more than a certificate, more than a bootcamp badge, more than I'm currently learning XYZ on LinkedIn. That line means you matter. Let me tell you this, coding only feels impossible when you try to skip the part where you build for a real human. When you pick one user, one pain, one stack, and you build for them, coding stops being trivia and starts being a weapon. And in 2025, with AI, with distribution, with how fast you can spin up an MVP and get it in people's hands, that weapon is stupidly valuable. I've watched total beginners go from, I don't even know what a backend is, to people keep emailing me asking when this ships. In months, not years. Not because they became gods, because they stopped studying code like a school subject and started shipping code like a product. And this is literally what I push with my mentees. I don't care if your end goal is, I want a $150,000 dev job, or I want to found a startup. The core skill is identical. Can you take an idea, write the code, test it, ship it, and iterate when users talk back? If you can do that, you are dangerous. If you can't do that, you are optional. And here's the last thing I'll say. Most people are going to wait. They're going to wait for the perfect stack. They're going to wait for the right co-founder. They're going to wait for AI to get good enough so I don't have to learn this. Waiting is the new quitting. So here's your fork in the road. Option A, keep pretending you're learning. Keep collecting playlists. Keep telling yourself you're almost ready. Or option B, pick one user, one stack, one problem, and start building the first loop today. You are one working prototype away from changing your entire trajectory. Coding is hard until you do that. So if you made it to the end of this video, comment below what you are currently learning right now. I will personally respond and give you some advice or resources on what to do next. Remember, if I can do it, you can do it too. Coding saves lives.